Welcome to Pre-Math. In this video tutorial, we are going to solve this given system of three equations with three variables by using method called Kramer's Rule. The very first thing, just keep in your mind that these x, y, and z variables are nicely aligned, like x variables are right up here, y's are here, and z's are here. And one more thing over here, as we can see in third equation, y variable is missing. So wherever any variable is missing, we just put down zero times that variable. And let's now look at the first equation. We have a z over here and this coefficient, there's no coefficient by default, it's gonna be 1z. In the second equation, this is gonna be a negative 1z, it's coefficient, and that's it. So we can nicely write this system of equation like over here, 5x minus 4y plus 1z with a coefficient one, and here, coefficient of z is negative one, and in that third equation, we have zero y. And on the right hand side, I have given these numbers a different color. And finally, in this last table, I have just put down the coefficients of x, y, and z nicely, as you can see. The next thing is right now, we want to find we want to solve this system of equation. That means we are looking for x value. We want to find x value. We want to find y value. And we want to find z value. So we have nicely set up these x, y, and z variable with one box on the top and one box at the bottom and these boxes are called the determinants of three by three matrix. Once again, these boxes are called determinants. Now in the next step, we are going to fill out these boxes. To fill out these boxes, let's go ahead and look at this part only, the left hand side to these equal sign, this box over here. So we are going to fill out all these numbers on these boxes on the top and at the bottom. That's what we are going to do. And here, as you can see, we have nicely filled out all these numbers in all these boxes. And here is our last step. Let's look at these numbers on the right hand side, this column. This is going to go for this x variable is going to go in this column. For y variable, this is going to go in this column, second column. And for z variable, it's going to go to the last column. All right, just keep in your mind, that's the next step we are going to do. And here we have nicely filled out these columns the way I showed you before. So that's our final product is gonna be. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy down everything like this one over here by myself. Over here I'm gonna write down negative one, zero, five, negative four, two, zero, one, negative one, negative seven. Likewise, for y on the top part is gonna be five, negative three, 10, negative one, zero, five, one, negative one, negative seven. And for z, the top determinant is going to be a five, negative three, 10, negative four, two, zero, negative one, 
0, 5 and the bottom determinants going to be 5, negative 4, 1, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 10, 0, negative 7 and it's going to be same over here as well. And here we have nicely filled out our determinants on the top and at the bottom. And as you can see that we have nicely set up these determinants. Now the next step is we will start evaluating these determinant one at a time. Let's start off this the bottom determinant, the determinant at this bottom, we're gonna evaluate, find the value of this determinant first. And here I have copied down this bottom determinant right up here. The very first thing we are going to do is draw this horizontal line right above this last row. I'm going to show you a real easy way to find the value of these determinant. Let's crisscross right now. Let's multiply. 5 times 2 is 10. And then right after that one, you put a minus sign and then we cross multiply the other way around. Negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. 10 minus 12 is negative 2. Whatever number we got negative 2 is going to go in the opposite side over here. Negative 2 we are going to put down right up here. Let's repeat this process with next two columns. First, we're going to multiply this one. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 1 is positive 4. We put a minus sign. Then 2 times 1 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. This 2 is going to go in the opposite side. And finally, let's look at this one, this very first column. 5, negative 3. Let's copy and paste over here on this side 5 negative 3 and let's crisscross once again with these two columns 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 then we put a minus sign and then 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 make sure you put a minus sign in between so we got negative 3 negative and negative become positive 5 that's gonna give positive 2 this positive 2 is gonna go in the middle over here and the final step is let's multiply these numbers first and then add them up that would be it we're gonna get the value so once we multiply 10 times 2 is 20 plus 0 times 2 is 0 minus 7 times minus 2 is positive 14 Let's add them up. So that is going to give us 34. So that means the value of this bottom determinant, this one, turns out to be 34 at the bottom. Since these determinants and these determinants are same, so that means we're going to have uh, 34 for these one as well at the denominator. Now let's go ahead and start evaluating this top determinant for x. And here I have copied down that top determinant right up here. Once again, the very first step is draw the horizontal line right above this bottom row. The next thing is we're going to crisscross negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 minus 0 times negative 4 is 0 so we are gonna get negative 2 so this negative 2 is gonna go in this opposite side let's crisscross the next one negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 then put a minus sign 1 times 2 is 2 4 minus 2 is 2 this is going to go in the opposite direction and finally 
we're gonna copy and paste this negative one and zero on this side and let's crisscross once again one times zero is zero minus negative one times negative one is positive one so that's gonna give us negative one that's gonna go in this middle let's simplify now go ahead multiply and add them up so this is 5 times 2 0 times negative 1 negative 7 times negative 2 so that is going to give us 10 plus 0 plus 14 and that is going to give us 24 so this 24 is the value of this top determinant for x I am going to put down 24 on the top for x right up here and now we are going to find the value of this top part top determinant of y now and here's the determinant that I have copied down once again the very first step is draw this horizontal line right above the bottom row and then let's crisscross 5 times 0 is 0 then we're going to put a minus sign negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 so that is going to give us negative 3 this negative 3 is going to go in the opposite side let's crisscross the next two negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 minus 1 times 0 is 0 that is going to give us 1 one is going to go in the opposite side and then finally we are going to copy and paste 5 negative 3 and let's crisscross over here 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 let's put a minus sign 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 so that's going to give us negative 3 positive 5 is 2 so 2 is going to be in between 2 let's go ahead and multiply these two numbers these numbers and add them up 10 is going to multiply to 1 5 with 2 negative 7 with negative 3 let's multiply and add that's going to be 10 plus 10 plus 21 is going to be 41 all right just put down 41 so that means the value of this top part of this y turns out to be 41 let me just write it down over here and finally here is the top part of the z top determinant of z that we're going to evaluate once again the very first step is let's draw this horizontal line right up here let's crisscross 5 times 2 is 10 then put a minus sign negative 4 times negative 3 is 12 that's going to give us negative 2 this negative 2 is going to go in the opposite side let's crisscross the next two columns negative 4 times 0 is 0 minus and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 so that's going to become 0 plus 2 means positive 2 this positive 2 is going to go in the opposite side and finally let's copy and paste this part negative 5 5 and negative 3 rather let's crisscross now so that is going to be a negative 1 times a negative 3 is going to be positive 3 minus the other way around is 0 times 5 is 0 that's going to be 3 so 3 is going to be in the middle let's go ahead and multiply and add these numbers 10 times 2 0 times 3 5 times negative 2 so 10 times 2 is 20 plus 0 times 3 is 0 minus 10 and if we simplify that is going to give us simply 10 so that means this 
top determinate value for z turns out to be 10. So we are almost done right now. Let's look at this for x value is 24 over 34. If we reduce them, we are going to get 12 over 17. If we divide both side by two, as you can see. And over here, you cannot reduce them. Just leave it like this one. Here we can reduce them as well if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get 5 over 17. So thus our solution set sun turns out to be a 12 over 17 for x, for y is 41 over 34, and for z 5 over 17, and that is our answer. And here is your assignment. Can you do this problem on your own now? You can take your time. Luckily, I have already uploaded this video as well. Please go ahead and check it out and see the correct answer. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos. Bye.